now we are going to talk about the next topic in the respiratory system which is called as pertussis now this pertussis is also commonly called as a hundred days cough or the whooping cough okay pertussis is commonly known as whooping cough so what is the causative agent of that pertussis the causative agent is the body della pertussis and this is one of the gram negative coco bacilli see it is neither bacilli nor cocci it is in between them so it is gram negative coco bacilli what are the virulence factors of this uh, body della pertussis so the virulence factors of this body della pertussis are the tracheal cytotoxin the pertussis toxin and the adhesins now we will talk about one by one about these toxins so tracheal cytotoxin causes damage to the cilia of the respiratory epithelium so what happens so once they cause the damage to the cilia the cilia cannot propel them outside the respiratory tract that means they remain in the respiratory tract so that's how the tracheal cytotoxin help in the uh, action of this body della pertussis next is the pertussis toxin so pertussis toxin is similar to cholera toxin it increases the camp concentration this may be asking mcqs okay this is mcq question that it increases the camp concentration and that results in the biological effects of pertussis next is the adhesins so adhesins are nothing but the fimbri and the filamentous heme agglutinins what does they do they let the bacteria to attach to the tract attach to the respiratory tract so these are the virulence factors of the body della pertussis which is a gram negative coco bacilli gram negative coco bacilli now coming to the clinical feature of this whooping cough or the pertussis so once we talk about the clinical features in the clinical feature there are three stages in the clinical feature there are three stages so the first one is the cataral phase the second one is the paroxysmal phase and the third one is the convulsion phase we have doubt that it is also called as the a hundred days cough that means it is expanding and the i mean the uh, pertussis is lasting for about 100 days so those 100 days are classified or they are staged into three which is cataral phase paroxysmal phase and the convulsion phase now cataral phase lasts for about one to two weeks and in this phase there occurs common cold symptoms there occurs the common cold symptom and this is the highly infectious state please remember the highly infectious state is the cataral phase now common cold symptoms which may which occurs in this whooping cough in the first one to two weeks are the coryza lacrimation low grade fever mild cough sneezing body ache which we generally face while we suffer from the common cold these same symptoms occur to those patients of pertussis in the first one to two weeks in the cataral phase but remember this is a highly infectious state the next comes the paroxysmal state which is lasting for about two to four weeks and this is correct uh, characterized by the whooping cough that means the whooping cough characteristically begins in this paroxysmal phase after two to four weeks and lasts for about two to four weeks in this paroxysmal phase and next comes the convulsion phase which lasts the most long okay so it lasts from one to three months and the frequency of and the severity of the open cough in this stage decreases so these are the clinical features in different uh, time period of the disease as it is lasting for about 100 days so the clinical features will not remain the same for all all, all the 100 days okay so the clinical features varies in three phases that is cataract proxim and the convulsion phase as we have described now when a patient comes to you uh, with the whooping cough then you should keep certain differential diagnoses in the mind so what could be the differential diagnoses of this pertussis so that can be a mycoplasma pneumonia a chlamydophila pneumonia which are also uh, uh, causing the or typical pneumonia then there may be adenovirus infection then influenza virus can be there 
and rhinovirus of course can also be a differential diagnosis you can remember this if you want to remember if you want to leave you can leave it okay so the important point of this uh, first part of the pertussis lecture is the clinical features and the virulence factors of the body tell a pertussis in the uh, next lecture we'll talk about the lab diagnosis how you can diagnose the body tell pertussis or the clinical condition that is pertussis or whooping cough okay